Hello everybody and welcome to Quora Top Stories. With us, you can hear the top real time stories put by a real person wherever and whenever you like. And today we are here with another amazing cop question. Hope you guys will like it. The question goes like As a police officer, what is the most inappropriate thing someone ever did to get out of a ticket? D.D. Wright, former gunnery sergeant at U.S. Marine Corps, 1959-1973, says I stopped a car for speeding, one sunny afternoon on a major four-lane divided highway, that had three teenaged young ladies in the front seat, who were coming from a local swimming pool, and were in the briefest bikinis. They were beautiful young ladies by any scale possible. I explained the purpose of the stop, after I had obtained the driver's driver license and car registration, and returned to my cruiser to issue a ticket. As always, while writing the ticket, I held it high on the steering wheel. So I could also carefully observe the occupants of the stopped vehicle, and notice the driver and center passenger, doing something involving the driver. When I had completed the ticket, and had returned to the stopped vehicle's door, I began to explain the cost of the ticket, the points that would be assessed to the driver's driving record, and the right to appear for trial in court to contest the ticket. Because of my observation, I was a bit more alert than normal, as I was doing this and prepared for any possibility. I was in mid-sentence of my explanation, when the driver sort of moved her upper body and, both tops of her bikini fell down complete exposing her entire chest area. She could have been a Playboy centerfold, but, without changing the cadence of my sentence, voice volume, tone of voice, or any change in my facial expression and body language I said. This ticket may be paid by check mail to the address indicated here, pointing to it, and, young lady your bikini top has fallen, and you might wish to fix it, and the ticket costs $30, and is a one point violation. I continued on with my spiel, as she quickly fixed her apparel failure while her face, and those of her friends, became so red with embarrassment. They would have been used as the red light, on the front of a fire engine en route to a fire, the ticket was paid. For a couple of years afterward, as this young lady matured, each time she saw me, off duty or on duty, she would blush and quickly turn away. She was married, and had two beautiful daughters. I was in a local grocery store when I heard an, excuse me Mr. Wright, and turned to find her standing there with her two young daughters. She introduced them to me explaining that officers were their friends. It was one of those moments that are golden in the memories of old officers after retirement. I will admit that, at the moment it occurred, it took all my years of marine instilled self-control, not to react to the apparel malfunction. Yay, nice humor from DB Wright with his comment. Their face was so red that it could have been used as red lights, in traffic. Lovely. Let's move forward to another answer. I hope you guys remember the question. This answer is from Tom Watkins. And, he says. Inappropriate is one word for it. I ran a Vasker on the force. It is a cheap way to check someone's speed without using radar or lasers which, in the late 70s, we did not have. This was in Guam, and there were not many places where one could really cut loose, and go fast. Late one afternoon, I clocked a convertible going 75 in a 50 zone and gave chase. They stopped quickly. I could see four young boys in the car, and they were doing a lot of moving around, and talking to each other as I approached. I noticed that they all were very young, probably high school students out for a joyride in their parents' car perhaps without their permission. I'd estimate them to be about 16 or 17, but they were acting pretty silly, and making lots of comments to each other. I noticed it had a military base ID sticker on the windshield, so I figured these were the dependents of military parents. I asked the driver for his papers. Faster than I could react, he pulled a gun out from between his legs and pointed it upward under his chin. He announced he could not get a ticket and if I gave him one, he would shoot himself. At the first sight of the gun, I started to draw my pistol, but stopped before I got it out of the holster. At this point, I was standing within 18 inches from the driver just off his left shoulder. It was a bright sunny day, 
And even with my dark sunglasses on, I could easily see the gun. I could also see that it was clearly a bright red, or orange plastic gun that had been poorly spray painted black. I could see that the plastic hammer, slide, and grip were, in fact, all fused together. This kid was clearly more afraid of his parents, than he was of me. The other kids in the car were alternately acting stunned or scared, and trying to stifle the laughter of the toy gun threat. I could easily have grabbed the plastic gun, and then spent a long time berating the driver on the dangers of using a plastic weapon, around a cop in these circumstances. I could give them a ticket for speeding. I could, but it looked to me like these were the kinds of kids, who would take all that as something to brag about in school, and to giggle about. As they told their peers about how they got away with it, or got caught doing something crazy. I was not convinced that either my lecture or a ticket would leave a lasting lesson. I had another idea. I decided to play along. I raised my hands, and told him not to shoot and that we would work something out. He shouted again that he could not get a ticket, and got clearly more agitated. I had no fears of him shooting himself, but I figured he was capable of trying to drive or run away. I had to calm him down so I offered him a deal. I promised him, he would not get a ticket but I still needed to see his papers, and I told him he had to promise not to drive away. He was so focused on not getting a ticket that he agreed. I took his driver's license, but he told me he lost his registration and insurance papers. I said again that he had to promise not to drive away. He promised me he wouldn't as sincerely as he could but I persisted, saying that if he did, I'd get in a lot of trouble. He assured me again that he wouldn't and then he said, here, I'll even give you the keys. That was what I wanted, I told him, I had to go check to see if the car was stolen, but I again promised him I would not give him a ticket. I told him it might take a few minutes to run the license plate number, and to make sure he was not a fugitive from some previous crime. He swore he wasn't. I said, yeah but I have to check, because I already called dispatch saying I was making a stop, and if I don't call them back they will send more police cars. I went back to my car, and called dispatch and had them patch me through to the driver's parents' house. The mother answered, and while I was explaining the situation, the father came home from work. He got on an extension line, and I retold all the details of the situation. The father was a chief petty officer, and interrupted me a few times with cuss words and other comments about his wayward son. I told him I would not write up a ticket, but only if he came down and took custody of his son and the car. He said he'd be there in 10 minutes. I waited in my car and watched the kids in the convertible growing in anxiety over the next 12 minutes, until the father arrived, still in his uniform with the mother in the car also. He came to talk to me first, as I saw all four of the kids slink down in their seats. I told him that the speeding ticket was one thing, but that bit with the plastic gun almost got his son shot. I impressed upon him that his son needs to understand how dangerous his actions were. I gave the father the keys and told him, next time, I'll give his son a ticket and if he pulls some stunt like this again, he'll go to jail. The chief assured me that the guns will be destroyed, and his son won't be able to sit down for a week and will be put on restriction, so bad. He will think he is an Alcatraz. That's what I wanted to hear. He shook my hand, and then walked toward the convertible. As I drove away, I heard his voice shouting at the kids for quite some distance. Kids. Enough. May God help them with their silly actions. They think they are acting smart and intelligent, but the funny thing is, all others, know about that stuff. Anyways, let's move on to the next story. But, let me remind you guys, the question once more. As a police officer, what is the most inappropriate thing, someone ever did to get out of a ticket? Wolf Bailey, owner, founder at, McCoyley's Business Ritm, also a peace officer, academy instructor, says. I can only tell you about my experience regarding your question. 
I stopped a young man, early 20s, for speeding one night. His passenger was an attractive young lady, who I would guess at about the same age as the driver. Thinking I had caught a whiff of alcohol, as he asked why I had stopped him, and he seemed more nervous than what I would call normal, I asked him to please exit his vehicle. And told his passenger to remain seated in the vehicle. When the driver and I walked to the rear of his car, I went through the normal traffic stop routine. Sir, may I see your driver's license, where are you coming from, and going to? Have you been drinking tonight, do you know what the speed limit might be on Olsen Road? Blah, blah blah. Then I must have hit the correct button when I asked him, Sir, before I run a check on your license, do you have any outstanding wants, or warrants for your arrest? I actually thought. He was about to start crying, or going to have a litter of kittens right there on the side of the road, because he started saying, please officer don't write me a ticket. Please I beg you officer. Before I could advise him to calm down, he blurted out, Officer I cannot get another ticket this year of I will lose my license. If you will not write me a ticket I will let you my girlfriend. I must have now looked like the one going to have a litter of kittens, because before I could form a reply, he said. She is good officer, I promise she is. The first thought that popped into my mind was this had to be a setup, and I started looking around for the internal affairs unit that I figured must be parked in the area. Not seeing anything that looked out of place I thought to myself this guy is serious, and he must have thought from the way, I looked at him that I was gay or something because he then said, or I can give you a BJ. In my years on the street, I have been offered money, tickets to an NFL game, free merchandise at a local department store, but never anything remotely like this before. I just kept looking at the kid with a stunned look on my face, and finally got my voice back handed him his driver's license back, and told him to slow down. Drive carefully and to have a good night. I spent a number of years in the police department after that night, and never had anyone else try to get out of a citation by offering what he did. After he drove away and I sat in my unit, I thought I could have arrested him for trying to bribe a peace officer. But then, I thought if he chose to contest the bribery charge, what jury would believe me? What the hell? That guy really needed to get out of that ticket. He actually would have done it all, if the police officer had asked to. I wonder, if convincing his girlfriend would have been possible. Weird thoughts. Let's move ahead, we may hear some more crazy answer. This one is from Jody Robinson Writings. He is a former Metropolitan Police Officer, at Honolulu Police Department. And he says. I pulled over a speeder in a convertible BMW. As I approached the vehicle, a female driver seemed to be squirming in her seat. When I got to her driver's side window, I realized that she had removed her underwear, and was sitting there with her skirt pulled all the way up exposing herself. I retreated to my car and requested a cover car, and waited to approach again until I had a cover unit. At that time, she threw her underwear at me, and asked, if she could do anything for us to get out of the ticket. Nudity in Hawaii is not a criminal charge, if only the officers see it, and cannot be the, offended party. I informed her that, she needed to produce her documentation, and I issued the summons after running her four warrants. She was not happy about the three citations she received, but paid the tickets and I never had to appear in court to explain her actions to the judge. Well that's all for this episode of Cop Stories. I will catch up with you guys in another video. Do not forget to like and subscribe for more amazing, wild, and spectacular stories from Quora. If you guys have more interesting stories, especially police officers, Please share yours in the comment and I will definitely put it in our upcoming videos. See you guys.